Good evening, visitors, and welcome to the Australian War Memorial's last post ceremony. My name is Sharon Bowne, and joining us today from the Australian Army is Colonel Frank Colley. We warmly welcome the family of Private Alan St. Clair Galvin, whose story will be told shortly. We welcome the veterans who are, have served, those that are still serving, and the families that love and support them. We acknowledge the members of RSL and Services Clubs Association, RSL Victoria and RSL Queensland. We would also like to take a moment to consider and pay respect to the many professional and volunteer firefighters who are out in the thick of the bushfires working in the most challenging and dangerous of conditions to keep people, places and communities safe. We thank you for your commitment and service, which reflects the essence of the Australian spirit, a spirit that we also showcase here in the stories at the Australian War Memorial. The Australian War Memorial was the vision of Charles Bean, Australia's First World War official historian. Bean landed with the Australian troops on Gallipoli and stayed with them at the front through to the end of the war. The idea of this national memorial and museum came to him at Pozier, France, in the depths of the bloody fighting of 1916. Bean's idea was that this would be a place where families and friends could mourn loved ones buried in faraway places. It would also be a place that could help all Australians understand what these men and women had endured and what they had done for us. Bean's vision, to which we remain true, is best expressed as inscribed in the entrance to the memorial's galleries. Here is their spirit, in the heart of the land they loved, and here we guard the record which they themselves made. Tonight we will read the story of just one of those on the Roll of Honour, which lists the names of more than 102,000 men and women who have given their lives for us in war and on operations for more than a century. Following the reading of the story of Private Alan St Clair Galvin, his family members will lay wreaths at his photograph. Today, we remember and pay tribute to Private Alan St. Clair Galvin. Alan Galvin was born in Tarkata, New South Wales, in April 1895, the eldest son of Thomas and Adelaide Galvin. Galvin attended the local primary school, then Wagga Wagga Secondary School, where he joined the Army Cadets. He was one of three cadets from the school selected to represent New South Wales in England at the coronation of King George V in 1911. After leaving school, Galvin became a school teacher at Tarkana. In August 1914, Galvin was amongst the first to enlist in the Australian Imperial Force. He joined the 3rd Australian Infantry Battalion and completed his initial training in Sydney in October 1914, he embarked for Egypt on the troop ship Euripides, part of the first convoy carrying Australian troops for service. The 3rd Battalion disembarked in Egypt in early December. The men trained to camps in the desert into the new year when the British commanders decided upon an invasion of the Gallipoli Peninsula with the Royal Navy having failed to capture the Dardanelles Strait. The 3rd Battalion left Egypt in early April 1915, first sailing to the Greek island of Lemnos and spending most of the month continuing drills and training while on board. At 5.30am on the 25th of April, Galvin and his unit landed on Gallipoli. 
The shore by 8.30, the 3rd Battalion captured a ridge and spent the rest of the day digging in. By the end of that first day, more than one man in ten of the battalion had been wounded or killed. Galvin remained with the battalion during heavy fighting. After a major Turkish counter-attack in late May 1915, he wrote to his mother, after four weeks fighting, I am still hale and hearty. During July, he was treated for an illness, but he returned to duty on the same day. In early August, the 3rd Battalion took part in an ill-fated attack on a series of Turkish trenches known as Lone Pine, named after a single large pine tree in the area. The Australians managed to capture most of their objectives, but at heavy cost. The 3rd Battalion's war diary records the confusion of the attack and concludes with the stark statement, our casualties are unknown, but very heavy. During the fighting, Galvin went missing. Some of his comrades recalled seeing him hit by machine gun fire and killed. Others remembered seeing him wounded, being carried back to the Australian lines on a stretcher. An official court of inquiry held in June 1916, nearly a year after Galvin went missing, concluded that he'd been killed in action at some point between the 6th and the 12th of August 1915 at Lone Pine. He was 20 years old. Galvin's remains were never recovered and today he is commemorated on the Lone Pine Memorial on the Gallipoli Peninsula, alongside more than 4,900 Australian and New Zealand troops who died in the area and have no known grave. Galvin's mother, Adelaide, and his fiancée, Eileen Ramsey, wrote regularly to Army Records to find out what had happened to him. They heard various reports from other men in the 3rd Battalion that he had been evacuated to hospital but feared the worst because he had not written home in a long time. It was only in October 1916 that they heard the results of the Court of Inquiry and learned that he had died more than a year earlier. Galvin was survived in Australia by his parents and his two younger brothers, George and Frederick. Private Alan St Clair Galvin is listed on the Roll of Honour among almost 62,000 Australians who died while serving in the First World War. This is but one of many stories of service and sacrifice told here at the Australian War Memorial. We now remember Private Alan St Clair Galvin, who gave his life for us, for our freedoms, and in the hope of a better world.
Please stand and remove hats for the reading of the ode and the sounding of the last post. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. Lest we forget. Lest we forget. We leave you this evening with the words of the memorial's founder, Charles Bean. Many a man lying out there at Pozier, or in the low scrub at Gallipoli, with his poor, tired senses barely working through the fever of his brain, has thought in his last moments, well, well, it's over, but in Australia, they will be proud of this. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, that concludes the last post ceremony. Tonight, our piper will play a lament for you, flowers of the forest, as you leave Anzac Hall. We thank you for visiting the Australian War Memorial and we wish you all a very good evening. Thank you. <laughs>